So the reason we are defining the Sobolev space is because it's the kind of Sobolev space that like we can define the weak form of the uh, the differential equations. So so for example, in our previous Poisson's equation, we had uh, we derived we derived the equivalent form of the Poisson's equation that is integration of the product between the the derivative of a test function and a solution plus the integration of the test function times the right hand side is equal to zero so that that was an example and in order to say this is equivalent to the differential equation in some sense we need to restrict both u and v into a space and in our previous example, we directly went to a finite dimensional space. But of course, going to a finite dimensional space makes an approximation. It makes an approximation to the differential equation and uh, through this weak form. But if we don't restrict the u and v to a finite dimensional space, but restrict it to a Sobolev space, which is infinite dimensional, we can say that the solution recovers the solution of the differential equation exactly. Okay. So, so if uh, so, the weak form of the equation is to weak form of the Poisson's equation is the following. So find a solution u in h1 of a and b h1 is the sublet space we defined earlier such that for all v we call a test function within the same space okay uh, this box is true right which is like the integral plus the integral equal to zero so this box is the same as this box so this is the weak form of the Poisson's equation and it's a weak form because if if f is regular enough so if f is a smooth function let's say or continuous function then we have a twice differentiable u, right? Because if f is a, a function, and actually any function, then the second order derivative of u has to be equal to that function, which means, of course, that u is twice differentiable. If that is the case, then the solution of the weak form is equivalent to, to the solution of the strong form of the differential equation. But it is weaker in the sense that if f is not a function, so it holds even if f is not a function, even if f is a distribution instead of a function. And uh, for example, what is an example of a distribution that is not a function? Hmm? Sorry? A Dirac, right, or, or a delta function, a Dirac delta function. So for example, uh, let's say f of x is equal to a Dirac delta function, x minus 0.5, and our domain is in, in 0 and 1. Okay? We can see that it doesn't make sense to say the second order derivative of u plus a delta function is equal to 0, but it does make a lot of sense to say this integral is always equal to 0. Because if f is a Dirac function, then what is the integral of f times v? It's just the value of v, right? It's just the value of v at 0.5. It's perfectly well defined, right? Okay, so in this case, what we are going to get, so let's, let's figure out what we are going to get here. So what we get is that the integration of a and b of any v times, not any v, partial v, partial x, partial u, partial x, dx, 
has to e equal to v at 0.5. Okay, so what does this tell us? It, it tells us that the u, so, so it tells us that u is not, dif not twice differentiable. We, we are, we are going to solve it later. We haven't defined the boundary conditions yet. Uh, but it tells me that u has to be a piecewise linear function and has a, this derivative has to be discontinuous at 0.5. To see this, let's let's define a boundary condition for uh, for this for this equation. For example, let's define with with uh, u zero equal to u one equal to zero. So let's define a, a most trivial boundary condition. And what we need to do is we this boundary condition is we are going to talk about later is an essential boundary condition that restricts this. That, that shrinks the space. So we call it H10 because this is equal to all the f within H1 A and B such that f0 is equal to f1 is equal to 0. So all the functions that satisfy a certain boundary condition. Right, so it's, a, it's even a smaller space. So then for all the v in the same space, which is also have to be satisfying the boundary condition, we have the uh, we have the weak form to be true. Okay, so now if we know both uh, u and v satisfy the boundary condition, okay, and uh, uh, so here what we can see is that. One way for this to be always true is for u to be a linear function in both. So, so for this to be true, u has to be linear in 0 and 0.5 and 0.5 and 1. Because a linear function means the derivative is going to be a constant, right? A constant times the derivative of v integrated between 0 and 0.5 is going to give me the value of v at 0.5. And uh, um, so, so let, let's, let's, let's do this. So the integral of a and b of this is going to be equal to... Uh, so let's say a is equal to 0, b is equal to 1, it's going to be equal to from 0 to 0.5 of du dx left times dv dx times dx plus du dx right. So, so u is going to be split into two halves. So u is going to be like that and uh, uh, it has to satisfy the boundary conditions and uh, uh, you get partial v partial x dx 0.5 to 1 so what we end up getting is that so you uh, du dx so du dx at the left is basically 2 times u u at 0.5 right because this is 0.5 this is 1 and this is u at uh, 0.5 if you divide by 0.5 you get the slope at the left times v at 0.5 and the other quantity is the slope of u is negative so minus u times 0.5 And uh, uh, the integral of the integral of v dv dx over the second half of the domain because v is also satisfied the boundary condition zero, so it's going to be minus v at 0.5. And with that summed together, we have four times u at 0.5 times v at 0.5. Right, so. 
So what we are doing is that we have constructed a U that is in H1, right? U is in H1 because U is a hat function, it's continuous, it's the square is integrable. The derivative of U is also integrable. It's no longer continuous at 0.5, it's piecewise constant, but the square of that is still integrable. So we constructed a U that is not twice differentiable, but in H1 that satisfies the weak form for a right-hand side being a delta function, right? So, so to get the u, um, this is equal to v 0.5. That basically means uh, u at 0.5. This has to be one fourth, right? So, with u equal to one fourth, this is going to be equal to v at 0.5, which is the right-hand side we want. So we constructed a v that goes from 0 to a, a 1 fourth when x goes from 0 to 0.5 and then go down to 0. That satisfies the boundary condition. It satisfies the weak form for a f that is a distribution that is not a function. So, so the weak form is weaker in that sense. It's, it's somewhat... Uh, the sense of that is similar to how we change the strong form, the differential form, to the integral form in finite volume, right? In finite difference, uh, in finite element, we also transform the equation to a weak form using integration by parts like that. And the weak form is weaker in the sense that the exact equation, differential form, does not have to make any sense even for right-hand sides that are not even a function.